What have you gleaned since you've arrived at the scene? Well, one of the biggest revelations that we heard was that there were actually nine people on the manifest of the helicopter when it crashed. And the sheriff here said that initially when the, when the, when the helicopter crashed, that firefighters had to hike up a hill because it was kind of a brush, it was a, a, a hill behind me, um, and they had to put out this fire. The fire was burning very hot and it was very hard to put out because of the presence of magnesium, uh, which makes it, which when it interacts with water, makes it burn even hotter. At the same time, though, paramedics were able to get to where the crash site was and evaluate if there were any survivors. And at that point, they evaluated that there were no survivors of the crash, and the firefighters continued to, to try to put out the, the, the quarter of an acre brush fire that was on the hillside. Now, I actually visited the crash site earlier, and I can tell you it was very foggy there. There will be an investigation as to what caused this, but one of the residents who lived at next, who lived across the street in an apartment building said he heard the helicopter going by. It was shortly before 10 a.m., and he didn't think much of it because helicopters do fly through there sometimes. There's a sheriff station right here. It's not uncommon, but he heard the sound of something falling, and he said it, it, something seemed off with the way that that helicopter sound. He, he went outside. He was on the phone, and he saw the crash moments later and so obviously there's a lot of investigation here to come as to what caused that helicopter to go down um, we believe it was on its way to a basketball game where his daughter Gigi was playing um, in the Mamba Academy which is just about 15 minutes north of here you know Ramona all that information that you just said was brought <laughs> forth by Daryl Osby the LA County Fire Chief he was mom on a lot mm -hmm. of other factors we'll wait to see exactly what happens yeah. in the days to come there are eight games in the NBA today two are well done the Nuggets and the Rockets are done fourth quarter for the Raptors and the Spurs Celtics and Pelicans yeah. are on ESPN a handful of games have just begun as we speak was there any talk from the reporting you have and the sources you have because of the outpouring of emotion from NBA players especially ones that are currently in the league and have to focus that they may not play games today clearly that's not what happened was there any discussion yeah, there was, and you know, from my understanding, uh, there were there were team there were games that were about to tip off right when this news broke and came around. Um, it was shocking for everybody involved and, and all the rest of the games that were going to be played that day. And you know there was conversations between the league and each of the teams and the general managers because uh, the players on on both sides were shaken. I mean they were so emotional in what Kobe meant to them. Some of them knew him personally. Some only knew him as Kobe the legend because obviously he retired four years ago. But there were discussions about whether or not they could play these games, and you know that was. Would be a, a, obviously an incredibly unprecedented thing. The only other time the NBA has not played a game is when President Kennedy was assassinated um, many years ago. And so the, the, the teams decided to play on. I know there's still an ongoing discussion about what the Lakers and Clippers will do. Their next game is Tuesday at Staples Center. Um, I don't think there's been a decision made on what, what's going to happen Tuesday, but obviously uh, everybody's hearts are heavy and especially so with the Lakers organization. No question. We'll continue to monitor it. Last thing for you, only because I think you're the perfect person to ask this. You're an Angelino yeah. by birth. Kobe is an Angelino by heart, I think, after spending more than 20 years there. Yeah. You covered his career, post careers, I mentioned. You've been around it from beginning to end. Your thoughts on how you would sum up the legacy of Kobe Bryant and what he meant to basketball? Well, you know, I, I Kobe over the years is somebody that I covered, but over the, you know, we, we got to be friends towards the end. And especially so after he retired, we would text each other. When my son was born, I, he was one of the first people to text me and always wanted to send videos of, of, our, of our children. And I think, you know, that I just got a call a little while ago from Candace Parker, who plays for the LA Sparks. She came here and she's played her whole entire career here. And she said, you know, when, when she needed something, she would always text Kobe. She would always ask his advice. Before she won her first championship with the Sparks, she reached out to Kobe and, and just needed some inspiration. And I can't tell you how many times over the course of my career, other athletes' careers, especially here in Los Angeles, that you knew Kobe was a text away. And when he knew it was important, he always got back to you and he always knew what to say. I'll, I'll never forget Jeannie Buss telling me when she was at one of her lowest moments when the team was, was flailing and her father had just died, the person she called was Kobe. And I, I think it's just his indomitable will, um, his his ability to compartmentalize and focus on and, and rise above whatever was in front of him. And so you talk about this Mamba mentality and the legacy that he leaves. That's what he was focused on right now. After after we're here and at this press conference now, we're going to drive to the Mamba Academy because that's what he wanted his legacy to be. He was writing children's books. He was writing, he was doing podcasts for kids. He wanted children, the next generation players in this league, to understand what it took to be Kobe Bryant and to, for that to carry on. That's what he wanted his legacy 
see to be. And now, I, I, you know, he did so much since he retired. I kept telling him to slow down. <laughs> like, enjoy your retirement, man. Go on a vacation or two. I'm really glad that he, he produced as much as he did after he retired because we have that to remember him by.